In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dear brethren, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all time belongs to him and all the ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, May Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Amen. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds.
Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud a mighty king's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal king. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let his holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, with heart and love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the Eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you let our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. Oh, wonder of your humble care for us. O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault that earns so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day, dazzling is the night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. 
On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor. A fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees, to build a torch so precious. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the light of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star. The one morning star who never sets Christ, your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear brethren, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people, and in these, the last days, has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this Paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came and morning followed, the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome and separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome sky. 
Evening came and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on the earth that bears the fruit with the seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth fruit of every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened, God made two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night, and he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the fourth day. Then God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was and God blessed them saying, be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas. Let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came and morning followed the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and winged animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things on the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, 
the birds of the air and the cattle, and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl upon the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on earth. And God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land and all the birds of the air and all of the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked on everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jubilate, Domino, Omnis Terra, Servite. Oh, the 
es Pascua. O oh God, who wonderfully created human nature and still more wonderfully redeemed it, grant, we pray, to set our minds against the enticements of sin, that we may merit to attain eternal joys through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you lift up your staff, and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go into the sea after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God who had been leading Israel's camp now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also leaving the front took up its place behind them so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud became dark and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall on their right and on their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud 
of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force, a glance that threw it into panic. And he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians and upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord God hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on the day, on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my savior. He is my God, I praise him. The God of my Father, I extol him. The Lord is a warrior, Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and army he hurled into the sea. The elite of his officers were submerged in the Red Sea. The flood waters covered them. They sank into the depths like a storm. Your right hand, O Lord, magnificent in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has shattered the enemy. You brought in the people you redeemed and planted them on the mountain of your inheritance, the place where you made your seat, O Lord, the sanctuary, Lord, which your hands established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory.
Let us pray. O oh God, who by the light of the New Testament have unlocked the meaning of wonders worked in former times, so that the Red Sea prefigures the sacred font and the nation delivered from slavery foreshadows a Christian people. Grant, we pray, that all nations obtaining the privilege of Israel by merit of faith may be reborn by partaking of your spirit through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. You who have no money, come receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for that which is not bread, your wages for that which fails to satisfy? Feed me and you shall eat well, you shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully, listen that you may have life. I will renew with you an everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of <coughs> nations, so shall you summon a nation that you knew not, and the nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and the snow come down and do not return till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Vine a
maceriam circundeli et Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, so hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace. Do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory. In excelsis Deo, et in terra pax omnibus, bonae voluntatis, laudamus te, benedicimus te. Gratias agimus tibi, propermaniam gloriam tuam, nomine Deus rex celestis, Deus pater omnipotens, nomine fili unigenite, Iesu Christe, most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection. Stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so they renewed in mind and body 
we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and, and ever. A reading from the letter of the blessed Apostle Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the right hand of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord this has been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb. When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him, but go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We come together tonight for this most sacred of all celebrations in the entire liturgical year to celebrate the wondrous news of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one and only Savior of the world, God incarnate who came among us to redeem fallen humanity and to save us from our sins, to save us from the slavery of sin and the wages of sin, which is death. And as we listened to these beautiful readings, which is a selection representing aspects of salvation history, we are amazed and filled with awe and wonder at the mighty works of God. We are consoled and strengthened because of God's fidelity to his promise. The word of God will not be annulled because God is faithful, even if we are unfaithful. God is true. 
And it is in a time wherein we are facing great difficulties uh, in not only our country, but across the world. We are brought back to the reminder of the wondrous news of God's saving love. And in the face of a pandemic that has the potential of causing so much death, and indeed has caused so much death in so many places in the world, the news of the risen Jesus Christ enables us to have faith and courage in the face of death and to see beyond the veil of death to the life of the risen one, a life for which we have been created, a life full of hope, a life full of fulfillment and joy in the Lord's heavenly kingdom. And that marks the way we live our life in the here and now. It marks the way of life so that we may not be overcome with fear and panic, but rather have confidence in God and pray and use every event of our lives as an occasion to grow in grace. The light shines on through the darkness. The darkness does not overcome the light. It is the light of Jesus Christ that pierces the darkness. He who is the pierced one. And he turns the logic of sin and evil on its head. When they thought they had the devil and those united with him, his instruments, the power structure of the world, then and the power structure in the world today that is still under the dominion of Satan would like to think that they did him in and they won. But God shows that the evil does not prevail. But God's saving love prevails. His mercy prevails. His help prevails. And it causes us to hearken to him, to be able to look to the light of Jesus Christ that is represented by this Christ candle, this Paschal candle, with the various markings and uh, elements to it that speak to us of the saving mysteries of God, of Jesus Christ, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and end of all things. And we are reminded who God is for he is the one who created everything out of nothing, as we heard so beautifully chanted, proclaimed in the first reading from the creation account in the book of Genesis. And how by the power of his word he spoke and it was. This is the power of the word of God, to create out of nothing. And if he can create out of nothing, then certainly he can alter that which he has created. And it is um, yet for us as his creatures who have a unique place in the order of creation, created in the image and likeness of God, created to share in the life of God, uh, whereby then so, so many times, right, we want to ask God, fix this, fix that, fix me. Uh, as if we were objects that he created, but we are not mere objects. We are human beings with intellect and will. And he doesn't give us the, perhaps what might seem the easier kind of solution to the problems in the world, but rather he allows us to be the fullness of what we are created to be, to rise to our potential, to manifest trusting faith in him, to believe, to pray, to live well, to make of our life a proclamation of the gospel, which speaks of an utter and total reliance on God and his saving power and disciples of his son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so on this holy night in which we celebrate these great mysteries, though um, as is very evident, we are separated. We cannot be together. And uh, I, I ask you to pray in a special way for the catechumens and the candidates who were preparing and hoping to be able to um, receive baptism and confirmation and First Holy Communion 
as well as those who would be making their profession of faith and then being confirmed and receiving their first Holy Communion, uh, they're, they're longing, they're yearning to receive these sacraments. And yet in, in uh, God's permissive will, he's allowed these things to happen, but we must have confidence that he allows these things to happen so that good may come of it. As we heard in the Exodus account, um, that it was by uh, the overcoming of the Egyptians that God is glorified through an event that entailed so much struggle and that had so much at stake. And yet those who defied and opposed God came to a bad end. And those who trusted him and put themselves in his hand and followed his instructions came to freedom, crossing over those waters, the Red Sea, to be delivered to the other side in their pilgrimage in the desert on the way to the promised land. So we, we um, want to be very mindful and prayerful for our brothers and sisters who are, and friends who are preparing to receive uh, these sacraments of initiation. And I want you to know, all of you, that you are in my intentions and my prayers at the altar in this Holy Mass, as well as all of those who um, are facing whatever trials or difficulties, especially in the case of the coronavirus, as well as other illnesses and circumstances that are so trying. But we will not be divided by the evil one and his lies. We are called to share in the light of Jesus Christ. We are drawn to him like a moth to the flame. Literally, here is a flame of our Lord. This flame speaks of us, to us, of his burning love for us. And it calls us to be ignited with the flame of that divine love within our own hearts and souls, in love for him and in love for neighbor. And so we are not uh, discouraged. We are not uh, dejected. We are not despairing. But rather we are renewed in the great joy of the resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ from the dead. And as we profess in the creed and our, our baptismal promises, that we look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the resurrection of our body, the bodily resurrection of the dead, and life everlasting. May our celebration fuel and strengthen us by God's providential care and what he has established in his church and the sacraments and the teachings, all that he has revealed and the beautiful spiritual richness of the life of faith that he has called us to. May this strengthen us and enable us to be missionaries in the world today because I'm telling you there are so many right now who have who been brought to a place where maybe there's a new openness, who have thought that they, they knew all the answers, they thought they could live without God or they could do everything on their terms and not on God's terms. This is a time wherein we're called to manifest for ourselves humility and get on our knees before the Lord, obey him and be faithful to him, and at the same time to encourage others to do the same. And through that, they will find peace and fulfillment and purpose and great meaning for their life. Because Jesus Christ is the the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through him. I pray God's blessings upon you and your families this Easter. And when I impart the final blessing at the end of this Mass, that is my, my desire and intention to bless all of you and to bless your families. And that the great joy of this beautiful season of Easter may radiate in such a way as to put all other things in their proper place and perspective. And the 
Jesus Christ be proclaimed and loved and honored everywhere and for all times. Amen. Happy Easter. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism. May he graciously renew us that we may remain faithful to the Spirit whom we have received. Lord, our God, in your mercy, be present to your people who keep vigil on this most sacred night. And for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore... May this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. Dear brethren, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan I do. and all his works I do. and all his empty show? I do. do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. I do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, and rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water in the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace 
in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Vidi aqua e gredientem de templo By his resurrection, Jesus Christ has conquered all that stands between us and God. We therefore approach the Father now with great confidence that all church leaders will be renewed in their mission of leading all people to Jesus, the risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deeper unity among all Christians as, as they acknowledge together and proclaim to the world the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the risen Christ may bless, guide, and protect all who serve in public office, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus, who conquered the power of death, may give our society the strength to eliminate the evils of abortion, assisted suicide, capital punishment, and all assaults against human life and dignity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may be comforted and healed, and that all who have died may share in the resurrection, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you have already granted us more than we can ask for in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. As you answer our prayers, make us ever more faithful to him who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Dextera
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of 
eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. All at all times, to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is a true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. And by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus Sanctus, merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, his assisting Bishop George, and all those who, holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith, remember, Lord, your servants, And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most 
sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them the forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, 
and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, our holy sacrifice, our spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Per ipsum et cum ipso her in ipso, est tibi Deo Patri Omnipotenti, in unitati spiritus sancti. Omnis honor et gloria per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. On you stay. Quit holy specata mundi. Miserere nobis on you stay, quit holy specata mundi. Miserere. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, I am not worthy, worthy that you, that should, you enter should enter into my, my roof, roof, but only say, say the word, word and my, my soul, soul shall be healed. Nostrum Imolatus Est Christus Alleluia Idaque Epu et veritatis. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.
Regina Celi, Letare, Alleluia, qui a quem meruisti portare, Alleluia, Resurrexit, Sicut Dixit, Alleluia. I need an acolyte to come and get Ora pro nobis Deum. Alleluia. Corpus natum de Maria Virgine, vere passum immolatum in cruce promine, cuius latus perforatum fluxit aqua et sanguine. Est on nobis pregustatum mortis in examine. O Iesu dulcis, O Iesu Regina Celi, Letare, Alleluia. Qui aquem meruisti portare, Alleluia. Resurrexit, sicut dixit, Alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Iesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, Ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to, in the name of all of us, I think express thanks to Almighty God for bringing us through a very challenging Lenten season and into the joy of the Easter season. Today we begin the octave of Easter. And so eight days it will be uh, as one day, one sustained day of celebration. And so um, uh, I encourage you to participate in the Mass and the prayers every day, uh, Liturgy of the Hours if possible. Um, and the other kinds of uh, beautiful Easter season devotions. Um, despite what challenges are there, we are uh, consoled and strengthened by the great news of the risen Lord and that he accompanies us and strengthens us. Uh, of course, in, in um, the, the circumstance where we cannot be physically together, we of course miss one another. And um, I'm thankful we were at least able to live stream and and be able to have some, some means of communication wherein you can witness the Mass being celebrated in your own parish church as members of this parish family and friends of this parish. So I want to thank all of those who have contributed in any way in uh, all of the many themes and the many aspects, some of which are very visible and obvious and other things that are not so visible and obvious. Uh, it takes many to be able to carry out the work of the church and, and see to it that everything is in proper order and all the elements are there for uh, a celebration of the sacred mysteries that we hope will be worthy. There will be, um, we can never ourselves be completely worthy for the Lord, but we count on him for the grace to give him our best efforts. So I thank everybody uh, for their good efforts and for their um, uh, beautiful contribution uh, to this worship of Almighty God. And so Lenten fasting is over. It's a time to celebrate and feast um, and to do so uh, in the praise of the name of the Lord. And so with that, now I, I want to impart um, not only my blessing, but the blessing of Jesus Christ, the great high priest, upon all his people. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you all forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended, Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. Our triumphant holy day. Alleluia. Who did once upon the
to say. 